Hello, everybody. This is uh, MLA Rod Loyola with you today, of course. And uh, I'm joined with uh, one of my constituents. Her name is Jasmine. Jasmine, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. No problem at all. So Jasmine, you actually ended up calling the constituency office just this past week to bring up one of the issues that you were really concerned about. But before we actually jump into the issues, could you tell us a little bit about yourself as being one of Ellerslie's constituents? Tell us a little bit about who you are, your background, that kind of thing. Sure, yeah. So um, my husband and I moved to Ellerslie about 12 years ago, right after we got married. Um, and we haven't left. We've been in the same house. We now have um, two-year-old twin boys. Um, we have kind of seen a progression in our life uh, career-wise. Um, I started out as an accountant, but now I'm a small business owner, uh, but also a mom of twins. So life for us has become uh, a dramatic change, uh, a big struggle, uh, mm. and, and learning to kind of balance, um, you know, us as a family. We have a lot of support. We have large families, but obviously, due to COVID, we um, are not able to rely on that support right now. I see, I see. So you moved to to Ellerslie twelve years ago. So I imagine, like, there was still, you know, a lot of lots being built and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think for a good two or three years, there was nobody behind us. The dust was crazy for a few years. Um, we kind of hit it on the ground floor, so we got lucky. Yeah. And, but now um, is oh, part of me. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, no. I was gonna say we 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 love this neighborhood. We love our house. Our neighbors are great. Yeah. Yeah, it really has filled in in the last five years, especially. Hey, like, mm -hmm. all the way down Fiftieth Street and. Uh, you know, the, the other day I was um, driving down there and I was just so surprised down by uh, Shauna Mae Seneca School, how, how much uh, their development has been there. And it's been really great to see that. Yeah, yeah, it's been nice. It, it makes it uh, quite convenient for us now that our kids are a little bit older, they can walk. Um, when the weather's nice, we can just walk to the grocery store, walk home, and, and it's not too much for two-year-olds, so it's really nice. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So Jasmine, let's go into a little bit about uh, why you decided to contact my constituency office and uh, express your concerns. What was all that about? So, um, there is a 25 there was a 25 dollars a day um daycare subsidy available for specific uh early learning centers when this program uh came into effect i didn't have any kids i didn't know about it because it just wasn't relevant to me at the time mm -hmm. and then as my friends started having kids they started telling us about it and we thought oh wow this is great because we were also trying to have kids at the time uh and then when when we finally realized that um we're about to have kids, we, we should look into the daycare situation. As a small business owner, um, I didn't get a mat leave, like um, an official mat leave, like somebody working at a regular job. Right. And so unfortunately, uh, I still did have to work. I had great staff. Um, they were able to really kind of support me and stuff. But uh, knowing that this daycare, this $25 a day subsidy was really in high demand, we started looking from the time my kids were born um, to see if we could uh, get on a wait list. And we were willing to drive them to any section of the city that had this program available because it was so affordable. And unfortunately, we didn't and still don't qualify for uh, daycare subsidy based on income levels. Right. And so $25 a day was just ideal for us, just being middle class. Uh, and so it took us about a year to actually get in to one of the centers and it is in Clareview. So we are driving 35 minutes the opposite direction twice a day. Um, and we only actually got in, I think we started in October. Uh, and then I know that there had been um, conversations going on about how the UCP was going to cut this program uh, but I know that they had extended it once or twice before and so I was very hopeful that it was going to be extended with the whole pandemic situation people losing their jobs and you know um, people taking pay cuts I, I thought that you know they would do the right thing and keep this program going knowing the current situation um, but then officially uh, last week, I did receive word from our center that the program was going to be cut and our last day of the funding was March 31st. 
And so I went into a panic because the reality of the situation is that it's $2,500 a month for two kids in daycare. And I'm not sure that that's affordable to most regular people. Um, in, in something like this, you know, we would rely a lot on our parents, but one, that's not fair for them because they're now retired and they already raised their kids. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, give them a, a break, or, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, once a week is fine. Like they're happy to do that. But then you add the pandemic into the situation and we're trying not to see them. We're trying not to be around them because they're high risk. And my husband and I work as do a lot of parents still. And so we just don't, we can't take that risk of taking our kids to their grandparents because daycare is not affordable. Right. So, so I, I spoke with a few people um, and, you know, kind of asked like, what are you guys doing uh, now that this program is not available? Um, and it, it kind of led up to, you know what, let's contact the MLA. Um, I, I realized that, you know, you're not part of the UCP party, but as, mm -hmm. as the, as me being a constituent, I felt like contacting you was exactly yeah, the right thing 100%. to do. 100%, yeah. Yeah, and so I, I was hoping that, you know, you would kind of be the voice um, for people like me. And I understand that, you know, at this point, the situation, the decision is made. But going forward, I think it's important that people are aware of what's happening, that yeah. we're losing funding like this, but we didn't exactly take away spots from, from lower income families mm -hmm. because they already are eligible for subsidy exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I reached out um, and, and kind of was hoping that, you know, you and I could have a conversation about it and, and, and sort of led us to here and, mm -hmm. and, you know, being a small business owner, um, you know, and being a woman, Mm -hmm. To be honest, in this situation, a lot of women have had to um, take the burden of the responsibility of staying home. Um, yeah, which but is in my the tendency, right? Unfortunately, exactly. but yeah, that's the tendency. Yeah. Women end up staying home. Yeah. Yeah. And not and, participating but, in the economy, right? Exactly. Exactly. But in my case, I have a small business. So if I make the decision to stay home and shut my business, I'm now going to leave three or four people unemployed. But not only that, I have money tied up in my business. So then I lose all of that. So it just becomes this circle of, of stress and, and um, overall bad for everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. And so a program, the $25 a day daycare program is, is vital to my family and to the people that I employ as well. Exactly. And it's vital to for us moving Alberta forward for a more modern economy, right? Like, I mean, That's right. I think that one of the biggest uh, um, misunderstandings or perhaps uh, misinformation out there is that the UCP is good for the economy, good for jobs. And it may be for certain sectors of the economy, but but definitely not for small business. I mean, especially over the whole pandemic, you know, they haven't done much to help small businesses locally. And uh, I think that's really important that people know that. And, um, and, and you're living proof of that, right? I mean, they did offer the relaunch grant, which I'm sure did help a little bit, but they could have done so more to help with, with uh, rent subsidies and, and things of that nature. What's your opinion on, on all of that? How has COVID impacted your business? So in terms of the relaunch grant um, in the beginning, I actually didn't qualify for it uh, because my business wasn't forced to close. Um, mm. But the location that we're in, uh, we have a lot of foot traffic. Um, and so uh, most businesses closed. So we lost all of our foot traffic. Oh, wow. um, uh, we are situated on Calgary Trail. It's a very high traffic area, 100, 200,000 cars a day on either side. Uh, but people are not going to and from work anymore. All the business around us was closed. Um, the hotel beside us obviously took a big hit because nobody is traveling. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I, we went from being open early to late to only being open for six hours a day, which meant that I did have to lay off two people in the beginning. Um, just to kind of figure out what was happening in that situation. And 
do we just close because we don't have any customers or do we continue with the reduced hours and hope that we have people coming in? And, and that meant that I had to take on the burden of working more hours because there's no sales coming in. So then I couldn't afford payroll, right. even with, even with the one person that I had left, I, I did have to significantly reduce her hours. Right. And then you still got to cover two kids in daycare. Yeah. That exorbitant yeah. in price. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's it's right. not affordable. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not. So then, um, we we kind of stayed that way for a few months, and then thing the first um, phase of reopening sort of happened, uh, and so we got a little busier. Uh, started to see some regular customers come back, but the hotel uh, we never saw that traffic from the hotel because rightly so, people are still not traveling, uh, and then right around that time, skip the dishes started offering alcohol delivery. And it was a no brainer for us because that was the only way that we were going to generate new business. As crazy as their fees are, we had to pivot our business model to adjust to allowing Skip to be a partner with us because we would have been dead in the water. Yeah, and I'm sure that you heard that uh, we were calling for a cap on the fees that uh, third party deliveries yeah. could, uh, could charge. Absolutely. And yeah. And in fact, when I did hear that, I sent an email to my account manager right away saying, look, um, the liquor industry does not make margins like the food industry does. Yeah. Uh it's forcing people like me to put up the prices a little higher because otherwise we're selling and making no money. Right. So maybe you can go back to your team and tell them that, look, mm -hmm. liquor is a big service. It's a big mm -hmm. money maker. So maybe we could talk about reducing the fees, but I, unfortunately there was nothing they could do, but right. because I had heard it out, um, you know, mm -hmm. people talking about it uh, and, and mm -hmm. sort of saying that, look, let's do something. Um, I thought, let me put my two cents in to try and drive that home. But unfortunately, nothing. Right. So let me ask you this. Uh, uh, a final question is what now as your MLA, you've uh, perfectly identified. I just want to take this opportunity to remind anybody who's watching this video right now that, yes, please. If you have any issue or concern, whether it's related to childcare or business or whatever the case may be, please reach out to me, your MLA at uh, uh, Edmonton uh, Ellerslie at assembly.ab.ca or 780-414-2000. Give me a call. Let me know what you're concerned about so that I can help you out. So what is it that you, uh, me as your MLA, uh, as the Alberta NDP caucus, you would like to see us do as we move forward with your particular issue? So more than anything in my situation, I would really like to see the $25 a day daycare reinstilled and in fact expanded to more centers because I know um, so many families uh, who are in my situation in terms of their economic status, uh, not being able to afford regular daycare, but also not being able to even get accepted into one of the programs that that centers that was approved. So, um, you know, something like that would be you know, like you said, vital to our economy and and modernizing it so that women can work because, you know, as a woman, I want to say that we're very valuable to this course, economy. Of course, of course, hundred percent. Yeah, but 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 I see a lot of my friends having to make sacrifices because they just don't have childcare, and and that's not right because you know they they are educated and can bring great value to this economy and not only that but teach the kids that women are just as valuable as men and in the in the workforce going forward so that their kids can can strive to do better because they see that both parents are working really hard exactly 100 percent. thank you so much for sharing that message with us i want to thank you for reaching out to my office and of course another reminder to everybody watching please reach out to my office if you have an issue or concern i'm more than happy to help you out and Jasmine, I want to thank you so much for everything that you do uh, in terms of running a business, for providing employment for everybody. I know that it's a tough time. We're going to continue to do our very best to make sure that the UCP government does its uh, portion to actually help small business and, and in general help families all across Alberta. But I imagine that... Uh, it's going to be a long slog. We have another two years of this UCP government and hopefully things will change after that. Yes, thank you so much. No problem at all. And you take care. Thanks for joining once again.